All right, we're here at the Corporate Box Gym with uh, the founder, Shaggy, Shannon Shaggy King. Mate, uh, up next weekend, up against a fairly tough guy, Wes Kappa, semi-main event. Can you tell us a little bit about what you know about Wes? Um, well, I suppose what I know so far that everyone's talking about is he knocked out Kim Johnson in the first round. Yep. Uh, everyone, everyone kept saying that he can bang. And, that, uh, and how tough he is. So, Tell us a little bit about the corporate box, Jim. You know, tell us a bit about how it come about and, you know, what is it about? What's the corporate box, Jim, about? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty passionate about this. Okay, what we've created is something where um, most gyms expect their fighters to, uh, you know, have to turn up the training. If you, if you want to be a train, if you want to fight, you've got to be at training at a certain time and, and all of this stuff. That's good, and, and, and it's good in a perfect world, but uh, we're not in a perfect world. This day and age, people have got to work. They've got, you know, you've got to get whatever job you can get these days. You've got to make whatever money you can make. So we tried to create something where it's 24 hours. So uh, they come to preacher's class. We've got pad holders from uh, 5.30 in the morning till 10.30. So if they can't make preacher's class of a night and because they're on night shift, then they can still come every morning and then get some rounds out on the pads and that that are employed by us to just just to stay here and hold pads for people, um, so they can keep up their fitness. So you know we can have boys that will fight that can only kind of make it to training two days a week, still earn an income, you know what I mean, and still keep their livelihood going. So it gives a, a lot more people the opportunity to actually have a fight yeah, yeah. rather than just mate if you're not here five nights a week you're not fighting. You know what I mean? Get here as much as you can come to the other there's no excuse to not train really there you go so it can fit in with their lifestyle so they can train at any stage you know what I mean so yeah so, no, awesome. That's uh, really good because I, I, I know there's a lot of us, there's not a lot of money in this sport for the guys. Yeah, yeah. So you've got a real income yep. and then fighting's more of a hobby. Yeah. But yep. we're trying to lift that and you're accommodating those guys who can, you know, busy lifestyle. Yeah, well, fit in. what we're trying to accommodate is uh, while it's a hobby for them, until they can get to that next level, that their family doesn't have to suffer, they're, you know what I mean, they don't have to be, they don't have to turn 20, you know, they don't start fighting at 16 turn 25 and realise they've got nothing you know what I mean, they can still try to build uh, a bit of a future for themselves and if fighting turns out to be their main thing yep. then they can cut out the, the rest and take that next step but until that happens we've created something where they can come and train uh, and there's not a time that we can't fit into their lifestyle yeah, good. You know, so. oh. now going back to the fight uh, semi-main event against the preacher it's going to be exciting, how's the preparation been for this one uh, we know you've had some injuries in the past and had a bit of a layoff. So um, tell us a little bit about the preparation. Yeah, I had injury. I got more screws and and bolts in a car in my <laughs> spine, in my hands, and everything like that. So, but um, uh, I think, suppose, well, I've been active. Uh, I had my first fight last year against uh, Michael Bedardo, and that was my first fight in two years. And I stopped him in the third. And then I fought uh, boxing, I put a professional boxing debut, stopped him in the second. Then I fought Kurt Finlayson and, and, and did that quite easy. Then I fought boxing again uh, for my second boxing and stopped him in the first. And then, so I've been active. Then I fought Moxon. Uh, and that was tough, but um, he's, a, he's a tough boy, but I, I did that quite good as well, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then um, I boxed again on the Sunny Bill undercard down the coast against uh, Daniel Kerr, and he was tough, a uh, big boy, like 79 kilos, and I prefer yeah, 70 yeah. kilos, but I stopped him in the fourth. Yeah. And then I boxed again on the Mundine undercard, Garth Woods, and uh, stopped that boy in the second. So I've been active now. Yeah, so good. as much as uh, I haven't had a Thai boxing fight in seven months, I've been in Thailand training for one month, um, that more, uh, we've got really good pad holders here and I can get the training here, but just me getting away from the business was the good thing. Um, and, mate, I've been sp sparring Mundine non-stop for the last two years. Like, he comes up two weeks before most fights and we go at it. Like quite good, so that's you know. Yeah, look, in in, in light of fighting Wes, because Wes is renowned for his boxing skills as yeah. well, so great preparation for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no problems boxing. Yeah. All right, mate. Just to wrap it up, got a message for Wes. He's coming all the way from Perth. They breed him tough over there. Well, I suppose probably the uh, the biggest thing is when I just fought Moxon, 
um, which was no elbows. Uh, Peter Graham said to me after the fight that I've ended his modelling career. So uh, I reckon with elbows, good luck to Wes. All right, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks for spending the time with uh, Fight Calendar. Beautiful. Thanks, mate.